kind of got an open slate today. It's National Dessert Day. So you can do whatever you want. <laughs> That's what we're going to do today. Whatever we want. There's no guidelines today. It's just dessert. Some kind of dessert. Well, probably the most popular of all desserts is a cake. So we'll make a cake today. We haven't, have we done a cake in a while? I don't know. But anyway, we're going to do a Yeah, we did angel food the other day. All right, so here's another one. And this one's perfect for the fall. Um, I was going through stuff that I had, ingredients I had left over from previous shows, and what do you do with it? I have, a, you know, almost a full jug of apple cider from Malt Cider Day. I mean, uh, so I said, what do I do with this? I don't want to just throw it out. So I asked around. I have some friends that I chat with about foodie stuff, and a friend of mine sent me a recipe for an apple cider donut cake. Perfect. You can have it for breakfast, you can have it for lunch, you can have it for dinner, you can have it for dessert, you can have it for whatever you want. It's a bun cake. We like that, nice and easy. Um, and we are going to use up, like I said, our apple cider. So let's get started on this one today. I'm going to come back and tell you what you need, but I just want to get this part started. You're going to take your cup and a half of apple cider and your two Granny Smith apples that you peeled, cored, and chopped. It doesn't matter how you chop this. It doesn't have to be real fine or whatever because you're going to cook all this down and then when you're done you're going to puree this, okay? Now, the reason why I know all of this is because I actually made this cake the other day. Uh, just for myself. I don't always bake for the show or cook for the show. Sometimes I just cook for the heck of it. So when he sent me over this recipe uh, that I said I had all this apple cider that I needed to use, he said, oh, I have a recipe somebody just sent me. Okay, so he sent it over to me, and I just made it just because I wanted to. It was so good, so I've already taste tested this one. I don't usually do that for the show, but it was so good that I was like, oh my god, i got to do this for the show. i got to show everybody how to do this cake. So, that's what I'm doing today. I know what it tastes like already. It's amazing, but I just want to show you how to do it, okay? So, here's what you need for this cake. Get your apples and cider uh, going over here on the stove, and I'll be right back to continue with this one. Okay, for our apple cider donut cake today, we need two large Granny Smith apples, peeled, cored, and chopped, one and a half cups of apple cider, a half a cup of milk at room temperature, two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a stick of unsalted butter softened, three quarter cups of regular sugar, a half a cup of packed light brown sugar, three large eggs at room temperature, a quarter cup of vegetable oil, and a teaspoon of vanilla paste. Okay, so what you do with this is, I forgot to tell you what to do with it. I just said put it on the stove, but for how long? Put this on the stove, bring it to a boil, and let it just cook for probably about 10 to 12 minutes. You want to wait till your apples are nice and tender in here, and then just shut it off and let it cool down. 350 oven, start preheating that now, because the rest of this is going to come together pretty quick. Take your flour, and in your flour, you're going to mix together all of your baking stuff, your baking powder, your baking soda, your salt, cinnamon, nutmeg, and ground cloves, okay? And you're just going to whisk this all together. In our mixing bowl here, it's time to do the usual creaming and sugaring, okay? So take your stick of softened butter, okay? And you're going to add to that, well, start that mixing up. Just so we can break up that butter a little bit. You're going to add your regular sugar, And your brown sugar, okay? And just mix that so you have it all incorporated and it's nice and smooth, okay? And next to that, you're going to add your three eggs one at a time and let each one get incorporated until that's all smooth. <laughs> it's always, we're always looking for that smooth. And then finally, for the wet part of this mixture, your vegetable oil, mix that in, okay? Now for this part of it, like I said, we're going to puree this. So just take your apple mixture that you cook down. It's still kind of hot, as you can see, but that's okay. And we're just going to puree this. 
you're going to have more than enough than you need, okay? So you could save it for something else if you want. Okay, so we're going to take a cup of our puree. See, so you, you have a little bit left over. You really, the reason why you have a little more is because you don't know how much you're going to get when you cook down your apples and your cider and everything else. You don't know if, when it cooks down and you puree it if you'll have enough. When I did this the other day, I had even more than this. So I guess it depends on the size of your apples. And to that, you're going to add your milk, okay? I know it sounds weird, right? But that's what you do. Mix those two together, the milk and the cup of puree. Okay, so let's finish up our batter now. Now we have our two ingredients, our wet, our dry, and our start of our batter that we did in here. What you're going to do now is alternatingly add each one. A little bit, a third of dry, third of wet, third of dry, third of wet to this as it's running until it's all incorporated and you have one smooth batter. Thing. It's just a bunch of steps, right? That's all it is. Is you lay everything out and you just do your steps. Last thing we're going to do is add our vanilla. I'm using a vanilla bean paste just because it really has a more kicked up vanilla flavor than if you just use the extract. I mean, you can really see when you look at the vanilla bean paste all the little tiny vanilla bean, the little seeds that you want. So I'm hoping that kicks this up a little bit more. Okay, so just finished mixing this. Get your bun pan all greased and ready to go. And we'll get this one in there. And that's it. All done. All done but the bacon. Okay, so just take your batter. It's very loose batter. It's a very wet batter. Kind of like a, almost like a pancake batter. Like it's really, really smooth. So just put this into your bun pan here. Okay, and that's it. There it is, all ready to go. 35 to 45 minutes in a 350 oven. Keep your eye on it, baking, especially if you're using these darker pans, because sometimes they cook stuff faster and you wind up getting a, a too dark of an outside. But you just want to toothpick it, comes out clean, you know you're good to go. Alrighty, we'll see you when this one comes out. Can't wait to try this one again, because it was so good. <laughs> hey, so there it is, just like it looked before. <laughs> The only thing I'm going to do different on it this time, I didn't do this the other day, but I'm going to just try it today. I want to see, you know what, maybe I'll cut a piece first just to make sure. I mean, this is like a super moist cake. It's basically like having a fresh donut, okay, because it's an apple cider donut cake. Now, what I wanted to try, which I didn't do the other day, is I'm going to take some of our leftover uh, puree, our apple puree, and I'm just going to brush it. I would have brushed it over the whole cake. And then what I want to do from there, just leave that there, is take some cinnamon sugar and just kind of sprinkle that on a little bit. That's why I thought of doing this over the whole top of the cake, but I want to make sure this works first. And if you're going to do that, I would suggest doing it right before you're going to serve it, if you're going to serve it cake at, let's say you're going to serve that cake at a brunch or something like that, I would do it right before you were going to serve it. Just because I think if you put it on there and you left it there, I think it's going to make your cake like really wet and soggy. So we don't want that. I just want to see if it adds a little something with the cinnamon sugar and the, see that? Mmm. And the apple. Puree. Mmm. It makes it even better. I mean, I think this cake was a winner to begin with, which is why I did it again and wanted to show you. It's that time of year that everything's kind of got that either apple or pumpkin and the cinnamon and the nutmeg and the, and the uh, that other thing with the cloves, ground cloves. Everything's kind of got that flavor this time of year, so it's perfect. Again, great for like a brunch instead of doing like a bunch of Danish or something. 
put this out, slice it up, put that out on a table and let them have that as their like sweetness in it. It is dessert day. It's definitely dessertable. You could put a scoop of ice cream on this with the glaze too and let it all kind of heat, you know, if the cake is hot, hot or just warm it up a little bit, put some ice cream, let that melt all over it. This would work so many different ways. Or just make a bunch of slices and pack them up and take them to a lunch. Take them for lunch for the kids, everybody. Alrighty, happy dessert day, everybody. Make whatever you want today. Just have some dessert. And send some pictures. I want to see some pictures of people having dessert. <laughs> Post them in the comments. See you tomorrow.